Seth, wake up. Time to ride. Let's do this. All right, we're we'll right. All right. This is hands down the best guest room I've ever stayed in. And it's on top of Eric Porter's garage in Utah. I'm Eric Porter. I'm a pro mountain biker for Diamondback and I think I like to do everything on the bikes. That's that's my specialty. If Eric seems soft spoken, it's because he doesn't want to wake up his family. This is his home. And these huge doubles are in his yard. Three years just to buy this house. You know, since I was a kid, I dreamed of having the backyard riding set up. You heard it from Eric. This yard is a dream come true. One acre with a pump track, water slides, a one-story roll-in, and massive floaters. But each feature has a story, and so does this house and Eric. And then in Louisville, I had a really big street scene, like Metal Bikes was there and Jimmy LeVan and all those guys, that whole Metal Bikes crew. So we'd go street riding every night and the skate park had just gone in. Did one summer on brakeless BMX. So I had pegs on the pegs, no brakes, and started sliding ledges. And one night I'm like, I think I'm gonna do a rail. Bunny hopped up and my back peg hung up on the top upright and just stopped me, threw me forward. First thing I remember is uh, standing in my parents' kitchen with a handful of teeth, like, eh, eh what do I do? <laughs> As I was meeting people, I was the toothless kid from Kentucky, which was pretty funny. <laughs> Got into slope style almost by accident, being right place, right time. I was racing semi-pro and maybe getting top five. Crankworks had the first slope style, it was called Joyride that year um, at Whistler. I got on the list to ride those things and ended up getting second place at that first Crank Works with uh, behind Bear Claw. So from Kentucky, moved to Durango. That's where things happened, riding. And then from Durango, we moved to New Jersey. That's where Aaron Chase and Jeff Lanoski lived. And that's where I needed to be um, to ride. And we went to Woodward all the time. We just dug jumps all day, everything else. And it was, it was awesome. That was, a year out east was it was super fun, but my wife's from Alaska and I've always wanted to be in the mountains, so we had to get back to the big mountains. And Park City ended up being the spot. We tried for three years to get this house. Finally came together after all kinds of just working and saving up and continuing putting offers in and talking to the owners. First summer, I actually started to uh, put the first jump in, um, which is the trick step up now. And that was because the neighbor to the back, he had been moving dirt and so I just walked back there and asked him if I could buy some dirt off him or if trade him for something or whatever, just to put a lip in front of and have some fun. The next year, Diamondback was having a bike launch in Utah. So I proposed the idea that we build uh, jumps in the backyard. That year we brought in another, I think 45 dump truck loads of dirt. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't go little. We went, we went big. So the water slides are from Matt Behringer's house, the pro BMXer. We got to be friends once I moved to Utah and started riding. Um, and I'd go up and ride his yard, which was legendary for the water slides and the weird features and satellite dish and all this stuff. A couple of years ago, he ended up selling his house. We had to get rid of a lot of the slides and all this stuff. So just before that, I'd said to myself, after you know three or four years of maintenance on the yard, I'm not putting anything else in this yard because I don't want to take care of anything else. I don't have time. But you can't turn that down. Um, it's, it, they're too cool and too unique. So borrowed my buddy's race truck trailer. We filled the thing up and um, got like a hundred something feet aside now. Yesterday, I asked Eric if we could build a new feature together. Originally, my theory with building the yard was to have the pump track to warm up and then big jumps. People show up and they either know they know how to ride them or they know that they don't know how to ride them. It's just, here they are. And then after having kids, push bikes were great on the pump track. They figured out how to ride there. That's, I mean, they learned how to ride on a pump track. Two years ago, Milo was old enough to start hitting some jumps. We built uh, a line for him on the left. Basically since the end of that summer, he's been begging me to build a jump next to the a step up for him next to my step up. To build a landing entirely of dirt would just not have been practical that day. And in the desert, wood lasts a long time. With pine he collected in the forest, Eric uses a chainsaw fitted with an Alaska mill to make his own dimensional lumber. There you have it. You know, he's like, can we build it today? I'm like, it's more than a day project. I'm telling you, it's like a week and we need people and it's gonna, you know, it's, we need dirt, it's all this stuff. And then, uh, I don't know what it was. You know, you and I just decided, I think we got this.
with this retaining wall, a little dirt off the back of a few landings, and an old transition that was just laying around. We were able to build this double in just half a day, but the dirt would need to harden overnight. This morning, the jump is ready to send. Milo has never jumped a proper double like this, so Eric is attaching some wood in the middle for him to get used to it. Ooh! Didn't get the front end down, huh? With Milo's first double out of the way, I was ready to conquer some demons of my own. Since I arrived at Eric's house two days ago, I've been petrified of sending any of these doubles. They're like little versions of what you'd see in a slope style competition, with steep wooden lips and abrupt gaps with no case pads on the landings. But as scary as they look, they were crafted by a master. Kelly McGarry, um, he used to stay here for about a month a year. It's, you know, he was a part of our family and, you know, the kids love him, talk about him all the time, so it's really cool to me to have this legacy here from him. So Kelly built um, this deck in the roll-in, and then all of the lips for the jumps, um, they're his proprietary design style. It's funny, I've had people ask me um, that are building lips, what's the training on that one or that one? And I'm like, I honestly don't know because I built those with Kelly, and he drew it out, and I don't remember. It's, uh, you know, he's, I wish I did, but, um, yeah, he knew what he was doing, and they work really well because of it. Oh, God. You recording? Yes. All right. You did it! <laughs> There's no reason not to go for it. You get one chance in life, this is it. Like, we, we don't have more Marios like you were saying, you know? <laughs> nice, it worked though, huh? I'm calling, I'm not pushing my luck anymore. That was awesome. Uh, getting hurt isn't even an option. <laughs> so yeah, that was a big... I think you're the first one to hit these jumps on a trail bike. If you have a big dream that you want to accomplish, you just put everything into that. I wanted to ride my bikes for a living. So I sold everything and just lived in a minivan. It's gonna take sacrifice to make a huge dream come true. And it wasn't like it all just happened like that. It was one little thing after one little thing. And looking back now, I'm like, oh, somehow this is mine. Whatever standing in the way of your goals, squash it. Sell your furniture, ditch your car, pick up and move. Stop making excuses. If that's the blueprint to happiness, Eric and Megan are living proof. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Ooh! Oh! You were totally right. I pulled up in nothing. Are you okay? I don't know why I thought that was gonna work. Yeah, I'm fine. But hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs>